Welcome to Food Exposed. I'm your host, Jackie Keller, and I'm here today to share some exciting information with you about superfoods. But before we get to that topic, let's spread some news. There's a lot of great stories out there. The first one I want to share with you is from JAMA. It's a study that was published in the uh, Journal of, um, of the American Medical Association, and it has to do with pregnant moms and peanuts. Turns out that there's no reason to fear having peanuts while you're pregnant. So if you've been avoiding those peanuts, which you know you love and you know are great for you because you were concerned that you would pass an allergy on to your child, research has now shown that by eating peanuts while you're pregnant, you actually help to insulate your baby against a peanut allergy. So have at, enjoy, they're great for you, super snack and good for your baby as well. Another good for you story coming out of Massachusetts. This one is based on a study that was done at the Massachusetts General Hospital. They designed a diet called the traffic light diet. And that's relatively simple and straightforward. We all know what a traffic signal looks like. It's red, yellow, green, you know, green is go, red stop, yellow slow. Well, what they did was they took the foods in the cafeteria and they color coded them with either a red, a yellow, or a green. And for two years, they studied the buying and eating habits of the employees in the hospital. Turns out that we are really geared to those colors because after two years, people made better choices, eating more of the green foods, which were the go foods, the fruits, the vegetables, the healthiest choices, less of the yellow foods, the slow foods, things that you should really think twice about eating before you do, and even less of the red stop, don't eat me foods, the highly processed, sugary, fatty, unhealthy foods. So good news is if you color code your kitchen, you will make better choices about the foods that you eat. Great study and interesting, simple approach. And speaking of simple, the 2014 list of superfoods is out. And guess what's at the top? One of my favorites, kale. And I know that it's uh, something that we've been hearing a lot about this year, last year. Kale is not a new food. It's a member of the cruciferous family. It is one of the healthiest vegetables we know. And today, I am going to share with you a nourishing recipe from the NutriFit Kitchen that features that wonderful superfood, kale. Here's your nourishing recipe from the NutriFit Kitchen featuring our superfood today, kale. And as we know, kale is just one of many vegetables that have some fabulous health properties. But this is a real superstar. First of all, kale is easy to grow. And I'm for anything that's easy to grow because even house plants are not easy for me. But you can grow kale in a little earth-friendly pot. You can grow kale in the ground. There's lots of different varieties, but it just needs good sun, lots of water, good soil, and you can produce your own kale. But if you're going to buy it, this is what you're looking for. These dark curly leaves, and kale comes in different colors. It comes in dark green. It comes in red. There's a blue kale now, a Tuscan blue kale. Uh, basically, they all have this, these very curly leaves. And yes, this is what they put on the hamburger plates underneath the, you know, slice of tomato and onion. If it looks like a garnish, it's because it's often used that way. But it is so edible and so good for you. And the best thing about it, inexpensive and easy to make. So what do you look for when you're buying kale in the market? First, these good texture. The leaves should have a little crunch to them. They shouldn't be wilted. They shouldn't be yellow. That's not one of the colors of kale that nature made. That's an old uh, bunch of kale. So you're going to look for kale that is crisp and brightly colored. And um, be aware that as it is with all of the dark leafy greens, when you're cooking with kale, it's going to shrink quite a bit. So you're going to start with what you think is more than you need to end up with just the right amount. 
You chop the kale pretty finely. Kale does take a little while to cook, so the smaller you make the leaves, the faster it's going to cook. And wash it really, really, really well because there is soil that gets in those crinkly little parts of the leaves and you want to make sure you get everything out that doesn't look like kale because trust me, if it looks like dirt, it is dirt. So wash it, rinse it, and when you're ready to go, you're going to heat a pan over medium to high heat when the pan is hot and you can feel the heat coming off of it, you're going to add in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Now, it doesn't matter whose brand of extra virgin olive oil you use. We know that as long as it's called extra virgin, it's going to be superior quality because the Italian classification system for olive oil was based on extras and virgins. Who knew that the Italians would put more extras and more virgins in the title to indicate a purer product? Make sense? Yeah, so extra is more pure than just regular olive oil, and virgin is better than light olive oil. And by the way, speaking of light olive oil, it's not light in fat. It's not light in calories, it's light in flavor, and it's certainly not light in price. So if you're going to invest in olive oil, invest in one that says extra virgin. Put a drop of it in your pan, you don't need much, and then immediately your washed kale right into that hot pan. Wow, that is great. Give it a quick, Saute, you may want to add a little bit of water to it. Just to give it, you don't want to have to use too much oil. And now it's time for the seasoning. We're going to add into our kale turmeric. This salt and sugar-free spice blend, which is one of Nutrafit's six signature blends, one that I designed myself, has some of the best healthiest seasonings in the world, in the bottle. All mixed up for you, ready to go. It's called Rockin' Moroccan. It's got cinnamon, which we know lowers blood pressure. It's got turmeric, which is an antiseptic, antibacterial, powerhouse spice, and about 10 other herbs and spices. No salt, no sugar, no preservatives, lots and lots of flavor. And it's based on sort of the North African part of the world. So it has a little clove, a little cumin, some of that going on in there. So we put the seasoning in. And then it's just a matter of letting that kale cook till it is as wilted as you like it. Now, I like my kale pretty tough. I mean, I, I like to get my teeth into it, you know. I'm not looking for soft, wilted vegetables. You, um, if you like it better cooked, you just leave it in a little longer. You might even add a little bit more water to it. That way the pan doesn't burn. But you let that kale cook, season it. And when it's ready to go, here's another thing you want to remember about kale. And that is that Kale is high in iron, as are many dark leafy greens. Now, how do you deal with the body not loving the iron that comes from plant foods? Because we know the body loves meat iron, heme iron. And the iron that's found in kale is plant iron, so non-heme iron. Well, we're going to trick the body into absorbing all the iron in that kale by adding in one food that is very high in vitamin C. And there's nothing that makes me happier than adding tomatoes into anything, because I love tomatoes. So add in some tomatoes. And what happens? Magic. The, the uh, vitamin C in the tomatoes unlocks the iron in the plant food and allows the body to take up three times more of the iron than it would otherwise absorb just by adding in that high vitamin C ingredient. Now, if you're one of those people for whom tomatoes are like, oh, no, thank you. She was fine till she went to the tomatoes. Then she kind of lost me. You can add in strawberries. You can put a lot of lemon juice in. You can add in oranges. There's a lot of ways to get vitamin C into this dish 
Red bell peppers would be another good choice, maybe some carrots, but you wanna unlock the iron in that plant food by adding in that high vitamin C ingredient. And it's a good tip to remember for all of your high iron foods. So that's it for our kale. It's a super great ingredient. It's part of a whole family of dark leafy greens that have wonderful fiber, that have good vitamin A, vitamin C, good uh, isoflavonoids and other phytochemicals that help protect our body against certain forms of cancer. It's very helpful for heart disease. Truly, having a high fiber diet helps to regulate blood sugar, so it's good for diabetes management as well. You just can't go wrong with kale. If you enjoyed that, just wait, because my next guest, Patricia Greenberg, is gonna be here with a whole table full of superfoods. To help us really understand how superfoods impact our health and can be incorporated into our diets, I've brought a friend to join us today, Patricia Greenberg, the fitness gourmet. Patricia is the author of two books, one, The Whole Soy Cookbook and Soy Desserts, but she has a breadth of experience in all aspects of food and health. She's a certified culinarian, she is a chef, a nutritionist, and an avid marathon runner, my friend Patricia Greenberg. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you, Jackie. Great to be here. Oh, I'm yeah, so glad you could you. join yeah. us. So tell me about these wonderful superfoods. I see we've got a whole table full of health. Superfoods are the new catch-all term for foods that are good for you, and essentially what it means is foods that are whole. It gets back to that eating foods in nature, foods that are healthy for you right. without being tampered with. So we usually group them more by categories. We say uh, foods that are, do certain functions rather than the food itself. But I narrowed it down to a handful that are really fantastic, so, really easy to so get. So wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So there really isn't such a thing as a superfood. There's a food that has super properties. That's exactly right. It's I the see. nutrients and the chemicals that work together in foods. It's not so much that just eating walnuts is going to make you healthy. Oh darn! Or, you know, because I know so many people yeah. who are looking for that. Okay, if yes. it's walnuts and I don't want the calories from walnuts, I can just like take a pill that's a walnut exactly. pill, and I'm going to exactly. get it. But that's not what we're no. talking about. Okay. So what we're trying to do here now is to group them by the properties they have. So okay. we look at certain fruits and vegetables and say blueberries, for example. Okay. Anything in the I, uh, This is my, my best guideline. <laughs> Anything that's purple or red is good for you in nature's kingdom. My favorite colors. <laughs> my favorite mine colors. Mine too. Mine too. So blueberries, black beans, even beets, those that have that rich dark purple and red color have compounds that actually we're finding now reduce the risk of heart disease, certain types of cancer. And one of the big things we're looking at now is the inflammatory response. Inflammatory response is often in response to eating processed foods, foods that have a lot of artificial ingredients and a lot of refined sugars and carbohydrates. So again, getting back to those items that are in nature, starting with what I call the purple category, the blueberries, um, Anything that has that rich color is okay. considered the, one of the best superfoods right now. Now let me ask you, what about something like eggplant? Eggplant has a purple skin, but you don't always eat the skin. It's my favorite vegetable. <laughs> I can do anything with an eggplant. I love the skin. Leave the skin on, okay. bake it, saute it, okay. throw it in soup. It is fantastic. Okay. Remember when we were little, people would say, take the skin off. It has Absolutely. no nutritional value. Absolutely. Now we know differently. Okay. And that so, must be the same thing with those uh, apples and the other red things. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, the second category now, really big, is the omega-3 fatty acids. Right. Where do we find that? In fatty fish. People hear the term fatty fish and they don't want to eat it, but salmon, mackerel, herring, these are really good for you. Also whole eggs. We're back to square one with the eggs. <laughs> we want to have eggs that include the yolk. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be too difficult in managing your cholesterol if you eat eggs because there's other dietary and exer exercise techniques we can do to keep the cholesterol okay. down. So all those like fattier things that we thought we shouldn't have, they're all good for they're you? They're good fats. Again, it gets down to the, fi the fattier fishes and the wild caught is preferable to okay. farm-raised. Now yes. what about like for salmon and mackerel and sardines, 
do they have to be fresh or is a can okay? Okay, so again, I, I will have canned sardines and herring in the house because you get the whole fish, so you're getting the benefit okay. of the entire fish. And salmon, I buy cured salmon, low sodium, no nitrates added to it, and freshly prepared, Got caught it. in the wild. And of course, any which way you want to cook it, it's fantastic. Okay, great. Got it. Um, the other thing that I'm finding to be prevalent in the news now, and it, it, I find it confusing for the consumer, and that's what I want to clarify, is again this idea of one nutrient. So I like to take the superfoods, which is fruit and nuts, and even some chocolate after dinner. Mm. Chocolate. Chocolate's very high in antioxidants. Yeah. I love so, chocolate. Uh, pumpkins. My favorite food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy well, to know that it's it good for you. Um, squash, pumpkins, you can get. I, and I also I picked items today also that are easy to get. You can go to the supermarket and get them. That's very important. Um, they need to be available exactly. anywhere. Um, mixed bag with certain foods, yogurt and cheese are high in calcium. Calcium has been shown to help reduce the risk of certain cancers and heart disease, but too much can cause an accumulation. Okay. So moderation on these. And uh, what about the fat in the yogurt and the cheese? I thought that was really bad for uh, you. It's a tendency towards lower fat. You don't have to get non-fat. You don't okay. have to get full fat. I'm a mid-ranger when it comes to that. Um, this I have to, was so thrilled to find. It's called a bag of superfood. Oh! And I got it just at a. Well, that takes all the mystery yeah. out of it. <laughs> just I don't have to think about what's in it. This is what I want to say for the consumer. It is so easy to get the superfoods. Great. Cabbage, red cabbage, green cabbage, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, all mixed up. Throw it in a salad. Throw it in your soup. Saute it with chicken. You're wow. all set to go. Wow! Really easy. That's great. So kids got kale. Um, what else here? It's got kale, cabbage. Kale, cabbage. Yes. It looks, I Brussels see a little. Brussels sprouts, shredded Brussels sprouts. Some radicchio. Yes, that's exactly. that purple stuff, yes, the, right? The, again, that purple um, compound. And last but not least is the tea. Mm -hmm. Now, green tea seems to have the highest level of cancer-fighting compounds. And it's one of those things nobody really knows why. We just know that it does. How, how is this? The American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, and all these institutes of health have done studies on populations that live the longest and seem to be the healthiest. And these foods all fall in the categories of what they well, eat. Well, I, I know the Chinese have uh, great longevity yes, and they have exactly. very low incidence yeah. of heart disease and cancer. Yes. And they drink a lot of green tea. They drink tea. a lot of tea. So, um, green tea, and does it matter where it's from or? Again, you know, how you know you in it? the interest of our bodies and paying attention, organic is always the best way to go. And if you can't find it, just stick with a pure single item and you okay. should be okay. Okay. Yeah. And now, how often do I have to have these foods? Okay, these, do I have to just have superfoods or can I have, you know? Um, I'm on the superfood bandwagon, yes. I think you should <laughs> okay. just have superfoods. Um, right. There's a few things floating out there that are controversial, as you know. Soy products um, have a mixed blessing, they're very, very good for you. They reduce the risk of heart disease. The problem is if you have some problems right. with your estrogen levels, you're not supposed to eat too much of them. So my recommendation is a constant rotation. Okay. Salad, green leafy every single day. Got it. Fatty fish, three times a week. Got it. Tea every day. Fruits and vegetables. Every day. Every day. Absolutely. Any kind of fresh fruit. Grab an apple, grab an orange. Oranges are loaded with vitamin C. The fiber alone is so beneficial for your digestive That's tract. True. That's mm -hmm. very true. So, well, um, thank you so you're much welcome. for joining me and bringing all these wonderful foods. I can't wait yeah. to go home and look and see if yeah. I really have them in my pantry like <laughs> I think I do. And I know that our guests want to find you and ask more questions. How can they do that? They can get me at uh, www.thefitnessgourmet.com. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you, thank Patricia, you, for Jackie. being here. Thank you, I can't Jackie. wait to yeah. share some of okay. these ideas with okay. our, our uh, viewers. Yes. And I thank you so thank much. Thank you. All thank right. you. And now it's time for the last bite. I want to share with you some insights from the coaching world. And today's coaching moment is about curiosity. I know it sounds strange because we think about happiness, 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 but really uh, one of the key components of happiness that we have discovered, and this is based on a book by Todd Cashton called Curious, is that curiosity is what really moves us as opposed to just the endless pursuit of happiness. So what does it mean by being curious? Well, think of it as being a curious explorer in life. And some of the key elements, some of the key characteristics 
of being a curious explorer mean having a deep interest in others around you and not just other people, but other things. Really become immersed in the process. Get into the flow of it so that you actually forget yourself and you're so engrossed in what you're curious about that it feeds itself. That's one of the key elements of being a curious explorer in life. The object is to relish the unknown. Don't fear it. Race towards it, not from it. To deepen your experience by immersing yourself in the moment and by reaching out for things that excite and challenge you. The risk is worth the reward. Enjoy yourself. Go out there, experience the world, find something that you're curious about. And don't forget, join me next week for another episode of Food Exposed. For more Food Exposed, check me out on empowerme.tv. And until next week, remember, make food your best friend and exercise your companion for life.